And for complex machining, the toolpath can also be aware of your tool holder by using options on the holder page. Access the Dynamic OptiRough toolpath from the 3D gallery in the Mill Toolpaths contextual tab. For more information on enhancements to Mastercam, be sure to visit whatsnew.mastercam.com. Hello. So uh, I think uh, that's one one big intro that we had to the new Mastercam uh, version that came out, Mastercam 2022. And uh, yeah, today we're going to um, discuss some of the mesh properties that happened. So if you want to put a face to the name, my name is Peter Goos. I think by this point I'm going to share my screen just so that you can see my presentation that I built. So uh, hopefully my share, my screen is sharing at the moment. So if you can just uh, let me know in the, in the chat if it's not showing or if it's showing yet. Hey, Peter, the, the screen's showing nicely. You can carry on as you were, it's looking good. Okay, so okay. My, name is, my name is Peter Goos. Um, I'm an application engineer here at Mecat Manufacturing. Um, and today we're going to discuss uh, Mastercam uh, Mars 2022 mesh capability. So it's a whole new tab that was entered into, into Mastercam. Um, if you do have any questions during the webinar, you can just leave them in the chat. I have some of the, our other application engineers that would be able to answer them. If uh, we get to a space where you can do a question and answer, uh, we can then, uh, I'll answer all your questions then. And um, if you have any other questions or want to contact me personally, you can see my email on the screen. It's peter.host at nika.co.za. And if you just have a general question, you can also email us at mcsupport at nika.co.za for any of your questions. Okay, so just taking a look into our agenda for the day. So uh, first, we're going to do a small introduction into meshes. Uh, just, you know, why are we doing what we're doing? Why we added the new um, feature to the new version of Mastercam? Then going into exploited meshes, with, we, where we take a mesh model and uh, divide it into patches that we can then use to machine. Uh, trim to surface and sheet, that's another function of meshes where we can sort of uh, take away a certain part of a mesh or form a certain part of a mesh. Then we also have mesh from entities where we can create meshes from other parts like solids and surfaces. Uh, modify mesh facets to modify a mesh, move the area on that modified mesh. And then decimation and refining mesh to, to edit your mesh by not making significant changes to it but taking the original mesh and making it more handleable and uh, organizing your facets of your uh, mesh properly and then after that we're going to have a moment for question and answer so if there's any questions or anything like that we can handle it from there now firstly why why meshes why why do we go into meshes can you machine meshes all of those questions so I've got that question a lot. Uh, can you machine meshes or can you work with mesh models? So the reason why we went into meshes is there's a, a ever a popularity of 3D printers and 3D scanners and everything like that coming into the market, which forces us to look at meshes and to work with meshes because you get a SDL file or something like that um, from your, your scanning program, then you need one specialized program to do to do the, the uh, to fix up the model and make, render it so it would be fit for the CamCAD environment. Uh, 
In the previous versions of Mastercam, you could do mesh models with our 3D high-speed toolpaths and multi-axis, but you had no way to zero in on a certain part that you want to machine on a mesh, or you had no way to refine or fill holes or fix small patches and everything like that um, with your uh, with with the with Mastercam, and that's that's a big big important thing because if you drag a mesh model into Mastercam. It's just one big part that's there. You can do nothing with it. It's just there. And um, even if a customer sends you a part, so he sends you a part, you open up the part and there's small holes and stuff like that, then you have to send it back. You have to wait, get it back, see if it's working now. And all of that just adds time to your manufacturing process. So that's why Mastercam came out with the mesh toolpath or the mesh tab. Uh, this will allow us, you know, to make all those small changes. So there's a few stuff that I want to run through. Uh, first, we have, we can see we have a um, suspension arm here. Now, this mesh looks quite good. Um, and if I go up here, you can see here is all my mesh tools that I have at the moment. Um, the mesh is, if you want to relate it to something that's already on Mastercam, it's closest to um, uh, to a surface. Uh, so if I would take a section view of this mesh, you can see uh, the inside of this mesh is one color and the outside of the mesh is the one color. That's the same as the sort of the vector orientation that we have on surfaces. And we can change it in the same way. So if I would click on my change over here, and I click here, we can see now we have the outside and the inside. And and uh, why, why this is important is if you can see this green arrow on my screen, your tool is going to point in the opposite direction of this arrow. So uh, if it's in this way, it's going to machine on the inside, like my arrow is pointing at the, mo at the moment. And if it's pointing out on the outside, it's going to machine like that. So that's just something important to keep your mind on uh, when working with meshes so that all your mesh walls are uh, pointing in the same way. What you would also notice is you have some, uh, ooh, let's just get rid of that arrow. You have some dark lines over here that sort of signifies edges on a solid. Now, if I would select this whole model, you can see it's a whole thing and all. But how do we get that dark edges over there? Well, we if we go into our view in our appearance over here, you can see here we have our mesh parameters. So if I, we can show our triangles, so that would show all the, the mesh parts. So if you were wondering, a, a mesh is made up all, out of a combination of triangles. So you can see all of this are triangles. So if we say show triangle, it shows all the polygons that are used to construct the mesh. Then we also have our edge angle tolerance. So if I change this to 90, you can see a lot of those black lines are going to go away. So we're just going to leave that on 28. So that's that's sort of what uh, just of, of what specified what edges are going to get black edges. But that's purely, purely, purely just for uh, displaying purposes. So what we can also do here is if I press F4 on my keyboard and I select over there, it gives me the properties. So it gives me the number of polygons that is used to construct this mesh, and it also gives me the volume. The volume that uh, is used that that uh, that this model is comprised of. Now, um, uh, if we Peter, just, just, just maybe hang on, hang on a second. Um, quite a few of you guys um, are having issues with the screen sharing um, in the audio. Um, I'm actually able to see the screen quite fine, meaning that it is working. Um, if you guys are having buffing buff, buffing issues and issues with the audio, um, what you can do is log out and log back in again. Um, and generally, this fixes the issues. Um, so if if that doesn't work afterwards, uh, I think Mike uh, Mike's done that now, and he says that's that's working. So so maybe if you guys are struggling, just log out and log back in again, um, and that does resolve it. Um, um, Harold also seems to have, have resolved his issue like that. So if you guys are having trouble, just log in and log out. I have given that advice in the chat, but it, and it seems to resolve a lot of the issues. If that doesn't work still. Um, after the after the session, we will send you the recording of it um, yeah. in case it doesn't work. So yeah, sorry, Peter, go for it. Yeah, I think I think after the session, I'll, I'll make a polished one just so that you won't hear Quentin's dreamy voice in the middle of the in the middle of the webinar. Okay, 
But just to to carry on, so we are looking at this model. So we uh, imported this model into Mastercam. Now, as you can see, it comes in as one part. So if I wanted to do machining or anything on this part, it's going to machine this whole part, or at least to where it can reach. So one of the problems we need to fix with this model is firstly, um, uh, uh, dividing this whole mesh into sort of like patches um, that we can use to machine. Now, how are we going to do that patches? I'll explain to you in the, all the parameters that we have to define that. And the other thing is, if we would put this in the top plane, you can see this part is not orientated into any specific plane. So I think that's the first thing we are going to do, just orientate this part. So what I'm going to do is, because I see this part looks fairly uh, symmetrical, I'm going to go over to my wireframe tab over here, and I'm going to go to my uh, bounding box function over here. And in my bounding box, I can select my mesh, and I can say in selection. We can see the bounding box is then going to encapsulate this model into the minimum amount of material. Um, but what I'm going to do is under my orientation on the side over here, I'm just going to switch that to uh, auto. So auto is going to find the base plane to put this part in and put that piece of material around it. And then after that, I'm going to go to my advance. I am going to say, let's create a tool plane on this. So, and I'm just going to give it a name. So let's just call it, uh, let's say, arm plane. And I'm going to set my current tool plane and my WCS to this part. So if I would then just green check out of this, I can then see on my planes, there is a plane that puts my part orientates my part in the correct way. Then after that, we are going to split this model into more machinable patches. So to do that, I'm going to go up here to my mesh uh, tab over here. And then you would see there's a function called explode mesh. So explode mesh, if I click on that, it's firstly going to ask me to select my mesh. So I'll select that one over there. And my method here is going to be modified. So I'm going to say modified over here. That's it. That just keeps it from creating a whole new mesh and you having two meshes and don't know what to do with all of them. Okay, then we have some parameters here. So here we can define how exactly we want our mesh to be split. So we have, firstly, we have the flatness. Now the flatness is the, the degree to which mesh areas are allowed to deviate while still being considered an in individual area. So if there's small bumps or nicks or stuff like that on your surface, it'll you, you can tell it, okay, if that is uh, a certain amount out, still keep that one surface so that we don't have a lot of surfaces there. Then we also have our uh, ang uh, edge angle tolerance. So this is the degree value that is used to determine when to break a mesh into separate regions. So this could be a 90 degree or it can be 28 degree. And it would then say if the one facet and then facet next to it. So if we zoom in here, we can see the one facet and the next facet is 20 degrees from each other. It means it's going to split it on that edge. But we also get some smaller edges like maybe over here or when we get into sort of like the splits over here, the edges are not, the angle between the two facets are not that much. So that means it's going to keep that as one region. Okay. Then thirdly, we have our merge percentage. So what happens is you get small slivers of materials. And according to my flatness and my edge angle tolerance, that should be a different region. But um, what, the, what we then do is we combine that adjacent regions that are technically separate according to our flatness and our edge angle rules, but are uh, producing slivers. So we uh, we add that slivers to a certain region so that we don't have a lot of, you know, uh, small regions that form. So it's just to create bigger regions that are more sensible in machining. So what I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to set my flatness to 0 0.3.5. Uh, my uh, edge angle tolerance to 25. I'm just going to leave my merge, merge percentage alone. And if I would then click on this merge of my preview button down here, 
We can then see Mastercam divides this up in three, 33 patches. I can, if I'm happy with this, I can then just say, okay. And then we can do something simple like, let's say, uh, we're gonna put it on the right plane. Let's just quickly create a plane from this and add a machine. And then we can do a simple two path, like let's say scallop. And we select just that one region over there. Uh, we can then just quickly specify it. So let's say three millimeter ball. And just gonna make sure, yeah, this plane needs to change. Just change that over quickly. And then I can just say, okay. And then we can see here is a, let's go to my toolbars. So you can see, uh, I just wanna say that as well. We can see, yeah, I can now backplot my tool off and it's just going to machine that one section of our mesh. Okay. So, yeah, that is um, dividing it up in regions so that we can be able to, to machine those. Now, what, what, what would also happen is you would get meshes that miss uh, facets um, or parts or there's small holes or there's stuff that's missing that supposed to be there for you to be able to machine this so going into my next example we have a part of a model here so firstly we have these holes that has formed here during the export process or something like that but not only that i get a call from the customer telling me oh listen yeah that suspension arm that i gave you um this uh this this hole needs to be um, uh, modified to for the for the shafts. We've got shafts from our customer, and they're bigger than we designed them to be. So, why don't you just uh, edit our mesh and uh, just increase the diameter of those holes? Now, in previous versions of Mascam, you would have told the customer, I'll, "I'll wait for the email for you to send back the new model." But uh, in this version, we can actually do something about that. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to quickly extrude something just to increase the size of this hole. So I'm just going to go up to my um, solids over here. I'm going to go to my extrude, select my uh, wireframe over there, and let's make it a distance of 10 uh, going both directions. And I'm just going to say green check. And now I just want to do it for this side as well. So I'm just going to go to my transform and say dynamic. I'm going to select my line there and my solid over here and say in selection. Now I want to clip to my center of my line over here. It makes it quite uh, a little bit tedious. So if I press my C on my keyboard, it will snap to that center. So snap to that center. going to make sure that's copy. And then I'm going to click to my Z over here. And we want it to match over there. So. If I hold down my C again, it'll snap to that center over there. So there I have just transformed that. So I'm going to say green check. Okay. So I'm going to do the, this side first, and then I'm going to do a second method on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my mesh library over here. And then you'll see here's a function called trim to surface and sheet. So I'm going to select that. So now it's going to ask me here to select my mesh to trim uh, and then the surface to trim, uh, surface or sheet to trim to. So I'm going to select my mesh, press enter, and then my surface or sheet, I'm just going to select this and select that boss over there. And then that's going to, uh, to uh, sort of like uh, uh, trim that. Yeah, I also have the option. So I can split that mesh. So I can carry two parts of the mesh. Um, or I can just trim it away and I can add in caps, oh, great caps. So caps are going to bridge the gap between those two um, uh, meshes that form. So I'm going to say create caps and I'm going to say uh, green check. So if I've done that, I'm just going to go to my levels and switch off my solids. And then you can see there it created a cap to, to enlarge that hole as well as uh, solve that mesh. But let's say on this side we do something else. So let's go this side and we do the same process trim to surface sheet, select my mesh, enter, select my boss over here, 
And I'm going to switch off my create caps at this moment and say green check. And I'm just going to switch both of those off. Now I have exactly what I would have gotten without doing the in caps. And what I'm what what can I do now? I mean, I have a mesh with a bigger hole than I started with. So what I'm what I can do at this moment is I can go to my surface tab over here and I can go to draft. So let's say draft. We select that line. We say okay. I'm going to say uh, I'm going to do a length of four and I'm going to do it to the opposite side. And I am seeing okay that looks pretty much good. And I'm just going to say okay. So now I can see. Uh, my 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 surface is showing to the right side because if I click on this, we can see that's the the normal vector side. Now, if we're doing meshes, we want to make sure that this is pointing the correct way before we sort of create the same mesh because otherwise that surface is always going to be opposite of the rest. So what I'm going to do after that to create this to a mesh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my mesh. I'm going to go to my meshes from entities. I'm going to click on that function over there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say add selection, select my mesh as well as my surface. So I need to select both of them and say in selection. Then I'm going to say my original entity, I'm going to say delete. So it's going to delete that surface. And I'm going to say combine selection into a single mesh. So select that. And if I would say green check over here, I can see now that has pretty much did the same thing, but I used a surface to add that to my mesh. So that is basically just to create those. But let's say you have a little bit of a bigger problem. So we can see on this side over here, we have a proper hole that formed in here. So now we can't create surfaces, or we, we can try, but I mean, that's gonna create a little bit more trouble than we would like to. But what we can do here is we can sort of patch it, like put a, uh, if you would imagine, like a piece of clay in there just to patch that hole. So how, the way that we can do that is there's a function called modify mesh facets over here. So when we select that, we get a few options over here. So our first is to create a mesh. So what a create mesh is going to do is, as you can see from the picture, it's basically going to create a copy of certain triangles that I selected from my mesh. The next option is my remove. So that's just gonna remove a facet that we don't want. Uh, we have a remove facet in create mesh. So that removes it and creates a whole new mesh on its own. And then we come to the option that we're gonna use is repair. So it's gonna repair the mesh and sort of put a play piece in there. Then the way that I can select it, if I click on select facets over here, is we have a paintbrush. So we can have a single selection where we just single, uh, select a single one, or we can have a brush over here. Now the brush is defined by a circle and, and it scales if you zoom in and zoom out. And we can have it set to either inside, so we can see all the facets that are inside this circle, or we can have a intersection. So every facet that intersects with this circle. So I'm going to set mine to inside. And to, to modify or to patch this, what I'm going to do is just carefully select everything, all the facets around this to say they must be part of the solution to give us this, to patch this surface. So there's everything. Now, if I would select something that I don't want like that, all that I can do is I can right click and I can delete the selection that I did. So you can see just like that. Left click, select, right click, deselect. After I've done that, I can then just say green check over here. So you can see it did quite a good repair. So it's, it's repaired. Uh, but as you can see, it doesn't match the curvature. It doesn't look that great. It, it did what it set out to do, but it didn't do it as well as we set out to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to green check over here and just go out of there. Then what I can do is I can smooth this area over here. And luckily we have a function with exactly the same name called smooth area. So if I select smooth area, so what smooth area is going to do is not gonna 
change anything, but it's going to sort of modify the way that something looks, stretch it a bit or anything like that. So now I have to um, say I want to modify this, not copy, and I want to do a facet selection because otherwise the mesh is going to adjust the whole mesh, and we don't want to do that. Our mesh is perfect. We just want to do this section over here. So then on a target, I'm going to click here. It's going to bring back my brush, and I can let's up the radius a little bit. So that's not good enough. So there. And then we're just going to select everything around this patch that we just made i'm just going to say uh green check now we have a few methods that we can use to to uh smooth this out um and just for this what i actually wanted to do is to see if i can click on the help file uh, just to show you guys because um the amount of information on this because it's quite new is, is limited but it's coming it's coming all the information is coming but what you would see in your help file is it explains exactly what each one of these does. So you can see it shows examples with pictures, and it shows you the original, and it shows you the new one. And, and then you can use all those just to, to work on your stuff. So you can see, yeah, it shows it quite nicely exactly what it does. But basically, if we also hover over it, you can see preserve curvature. It's going to smooth the mesh with minimal changes in the curvature. Or you have your minimize. Which is smooths the mesh by flattening the neighbor facet. So think about like almost ironing everything out, making everything flat. Our minimized area is going to minimize the area overall area of our mesh. So this is this has the most uh, dramatic and significant uh, change. But as you can see, we don't really want to change the area of this. And uh, air of average is going to smooth the mesh by applying the neighbors. Um, Average vertex, vertex position to each vertex. Well, now what that means is just it's going to look at how this surface is orientated and orientate all the surfaces to get an average surface. But for this example, what we're just going to do is we're just going to say minimize curvature. And we are going to set our maximum iterations to the same. So this, uh, just take note, this is going to take more processing power or processing time. But it's basically going to apply that feature 10 times or a maximum of 10 times to get the desired result. So with all that set, I can just click on my preview button down here and we can see that fix that up quite nicely just to give us the, 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 the correct curvature that we want. So I can then just go and say green check. And then, yeah, we pretty much fixed those up quite nicely so just before we go on to the next version or the next example i just do want to uh hop over here and i just wanted to just go start a poll over here i just want to see how much of the people that's watching the show at the moment has been working with mesh models so um i know i've been working with a few of them but that's just uh you know using it as a complex stop or something like that never really uh modified anything to a mesh or use a mesh for machining operations or anything like that so you can just answer the poll there and i think after this example just before the q a we can go over the the, the results of the polls okay so next i'm just going to open up a what i believe is a more of a better use case uh Let's just go out to our blow mold. So just waiting for that to open. Okay, so here we have our blow mold and we have it in a mold base. So we can see we have our part there. And this can then be used in our CAD, in, in the CAD of, of, of solid of MasterCam just to, to do to help us do the molds and everything like that. So um, looking at our um, uh, blow mold that we have here, our container mesh, I can go to my view and I can go to appearance and I can switch on my triangles. So I'm just going to do that. So what you would see here is there's a lot of triangles. Now what this causes is not only does it have an effect on like the machining operations that you're going to be able to do on this, but it's also got an effect on the size of this 
this mesh file takes up and the processing power and all the details that needs to be taken in there. So what we also want to do um, is we want to change this. We want to change the polygons that we have on this uh, mesh, you know, get more sort of bigger polygons on flat of parts and smaller polygons on spaces that needs more detail. Um, so what we want to do, and, and, and even remove, like you can see up here, we have needless polygons over here that we want to change. So if I go to my, if I press F4 on my keyboard and I select this, we can see we have about, you know, 256,000 polygons. And what we want to do by the end of this is we want to reduce that number and we have, want to distribute the, the, the facets more evenly and more logically, you know, smaller facets and uh, uh, more detailed areas and bigger facets and less detailed areas. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of the, these at the top here because you can see they serve no purpose at the moment. So I'm just going to put my view in like a front view so I can select it from the side. I'm going to go to my mesh over here and I am going to go to my modify mesh facets. I'm going to say remove. I'm going to click on this to select my facets and I'm going to say brush. I'm going to say intersection. So I want to select anything that intersects my brush and I'm going to use my wraparound. So what wraparound does is, as you can see, it sort of like forces a beam through the whole mesh that selects everything on either side of where your brush is selecting. So I can then just zoom in here and I can then just select this whole section like that. After I've done that, you can just double check. Yeah, it seems like it selected everything and we can say green check. And it's automatically uh, updating my preview. So we can see there it deleted all those facets over there. And I can then just say green check to go out of there. So then I have my part over there. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to try to simplify my mesh and reduce the overall facet count. Now, the one way we can do that is this a function here in our mesh called decimation. So that exactly does what I said, it uses the number of facets and um, simplifies it. So I would go into my decimation and I would select my mesh over there. And then I'm going to say my method is going to be modifying. And then we have a few uh, parameters that we can set here. The first is our preservation angle. Now this is how much decimation uh, is allowed to move the adjacent facets when simplifying the model. So that's um, that's how much it's allowed to move these facets around to give us more um, of a, a better better model. Now, if we're gonna use more like organic shapes, like more curvy uh, type of parts, um, you're gonna have to have a preservation angle that's much larger. And if you're gonna have like prismatic parts, think of like a pyramid shape or diamond shape or something like that you're going to use a smaller angle. Then we also have our reduction goal. That's by how much do we want to reduce the amount of facets that are in our, um, our model. And we also have an approximate facet shift. Uh, that's the value that limits the overall shift or change in the mesh, mesh surface. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my preservation angle to 20. I'm going to give it a, a, a goal. Let's make it a lofty goal of, uh, let's say, 50%. And then my approximate facet shift, I'm going to leave that to uh, 0 0.2. If I would then go and I would say preview, it's just going to take a, a little while. And then it, it, it didn't reorganize it, but it reduced the, uh, the amount. So you can see here, yes, our facet removed. So we can say, you can see that's what it originally was. This is what we have. And that's the amount that it removed. And we can see we got a reduction percentage of 50.36. Uh, uh, so it just removed some of the unneeded ones. So we can then just say green check to go up here. Now, to refine how the, 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 the mesh is going to look and how the facets are orientated and everything like that,
we are going to use a function of exactly the same name, refine. And what this is going to do is it's going to it's, uh, refine is used to rearrange the facets in a, uh, a facet concentration of the model. So we're going to go here into our refine, select our mesh, and then we basically get two methods. So the first one that we're going to try, so we're going to set to an isotropic. Now, an isotropic, what it does is it attempts to fit larger facets to areas of less detail and smaller facets to areas of finer detail. Now, this is all weighted by our gamma factor over there. But what we are going to do is we are going to just say preview. So we're just going to um, let's let's change some stuff. Let's put our um, let's put our preservation angle to five. So we're going to put our preservation angle to five. We're going to put our average uh, edge length. We're going to set that to 15 and our maximum iterations we're going to leave on one. So if we would then preview this, we can see it did make a few changes, but it's not as good as we want it to be. So we can see by putting larger facets in less detailed areas and a smaller facet in more detailed, finer detailed areas, it's not the best that we can do yet. So next we're going to use a different function called isotropic. Now, what isotropic is trying to do is it's just going to attempt to apply uniform size facets to the whole model. So we're going to set it to isotropic. And let's reduce some stuff. So let's go with a preservation angle of 1. We are going to go with an average length of 10. And we are going to go with a maximum iteration of 5. So it's going to apply that 5 times. So if I would say preview, I can see this. This allows us to get a more uniform distribution of our facets. So that gives us a, a much better model and a much better facet distribution. So I can, I'm happy with that and I can just say, okay, from here. Okay, so that is how we just redefine that. So now you're asking me now, what did we change? And so we redefine stuff and we're talking about size and everything like that. So if I would quickly just see um, if I can't go to my model that I set up that wasn't open now, I can see that my, um, my pod when I began, so I can see my pod when I began was about 26 uh, megabytes. And we reduced that after doing all that. We reduced that to about 16. So that's about 10 megabytes that we reduced from that model. And that's going to have a big effect on our two-part processing, our part saved. And even if we need to send this somewhere, you know, you can now send it over an email. You don't have to, to link it to something. And again, like we can do direct machining from this. So let's say I put my uh, planes uh, on top. So, and I can just quickly, just want to check that. So I can just quickly drag a uh, sort of like a, a rectangle around this. I can do a quick flat area. And I can say, go to my mesh. And I can say, do a, uh, a trim to a, sur a surface sheet. So I can say, this is my mesh model and say enter and I can say this is what I want to split with and see it gives me not I actually want the bottom one so I'm just going to say split mesh and say okay now I can like uh, delete this or I can put it on the next level I'm just for this example just going to delete this and I can see this is the inside of my model so if I now want a machine on the inside of this model I just need to go and change the vertices or the, the surface vector of this and what I can do is I can go to my surfaces over here. I can say change. Click on anywhere inside. It's going to change that around. I just press escape to get out of that. And then I can just go and let's say we want to do, let's do a, a scallop again. It's going to say cancel. I'm going to select this whole thing. Now we don't have to uh, divide this into smaller pieces because the tool is just going to stay inside here. 
I can then go and say include silhouette boundary, so it'll create a boundary at the outside of this um, container. Uh, let's go for a little bit of a bigger tool. Uh, let's do a let's say eight. So eight and say okay, and then I can say come from the outside. Let's just do two moles, uh, just so it will process easily, and just check my planes. Everything should be fine. And yeah, then we can just say okay. And we can just check from our toolpath. So as you would see, Moscam also has a lot of new icons and bips and bobs uh, on the new version. If I would backplot this, you can see, oh, there it goes. And it machines the whole part. It even adjusts for that edge over there. And so now you can just machine parts that you 3D scanned or uh, got from any other customer or metrology uh, software um, just to machine that. So that is basically um, all that I have on uh, meshes at the moment for you. You can see that pretty much covers most of the function that you would normally use when adjusting your, your meshes. And um, yeah, for uh, just before we do the Q and A um, on our next on next episode of Mastercam um, 2022 is is going to be around Unified. So Unified is a new um, Mastercam multi-axis toolpath um, that sort of encapsulates a few um, uh, normal uh, uh, multi-axis toolpaths and it gives you just more control when doing a certain um, operation in multi-axis. Uh, so just uh, it's, it's probably going to be in the next two weeks, but we'll send out um, all the information regarding that. So let me just go to my uh, okay. Let's just say do it later, and let's just see the results of the polls. So we can see here yeah, we have a few times. Yes, a few times we have two people and three people said no, not really. So at least. What, everyone knows what a mesh is. Okay, so I just want to skip over here to the questions or the chats. Um, and I see everything looks good. So I'm going to give at a moment here that if anyone wants to ask, ask me a question or anything like that, I think you can just switch on your mic and ask a question. And yeah, um, we'll be happy to answer that. Yeah, so Peter, I've also put a question a question in the poll asking um, if they enjoyed today's session. Um, just some feedback from them on what they'd like to see in future sessions, uh, future Mastercam, MECAT uh, manufacturing webinars. So you know, please feel free to share your feedback with us guys so we can you know prepare stuff that um, that you'd like to see as well. Okay. So yeah, we, we're gonna put this on. Um, I, I, I'm not sure what what social network we're gonna put this on, but we'll put this whole webinar on again. Again, if you do have any questions or anything you want us to answer, you can just uh, give us a shout at uh, mc support at mika.co.za, or you can just contact me directly um, at peter uh, peter at mika.co.za. Okay, so is there any questions? No, I okay. think everyone's uh, everyone's happy. I don't, I don't see any further questions. Okay, no, that's good. Okay, so I guess uh, we can pretty much call it if there's no questions. So thank you so much, guys, for um, uh, showing up and uh, listening to me going on about all the new cool stuff that excites me a lot. On Mastercam, and then uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just let us know. Okay. Okay.